Chemistry. What is chemistry? One could say chemistry is the study of matter and how matter changes. But then you have to ask yourself, what is matter? One definition of matter is that everything that has a mass is made out of matter. This means that everything you can see around you, touch or see in an instrument, for example a telescope, is made out of matter. Matter can change in plenty of ways. It can be ice that melts, iron that corrodes, children growing into adults, plants growing, petrol burning and many, many more things. All of this is chemistry. So let's write this down. Chemistry is the study of matter and how it changes. Matter may exist in a few different forms too. We call them phases or states of matter. They are normally solid, liquid and gas. As a matter of fact, in this picture of some melting snow, you may see an example of all three of them. Snow is a form of ice that is solid water. The snow is melting, causing some liquid water to form, which you can see here. And even though you can't actually see it, some of the water also evaporates, creating water vapor. That is, water in its gaseous form. When matter changes from one state to another, it's called a phase transition. When it changes from solid to liquid, it's called melting. We can write the melting of ice with a chemical formula too. I'm positive you are already familiar with the chemical formula for water, H2O. By writing an S between parentheses like this, we show that the water is in its solid form. It's ice. We need some heat to melt the ice too, so we add this to the formula. Now what happens is that the solid water changes into liquid water. By adding an L here, we show that the water is now liquid. Another phase transition is evaporation, that is when matter changes from liquid to gas. In this beaker with hot water, the water evaporates and changes into water vapor. Let's add this to what we wrote before. An example of evaporation is when water in liquid form plus heat, we've got to add heat again, turns into water in its gaseous form, that is water vapor. That's what this G in between the parentheses means. Then there's a special variety of phase transition too, and you're about to learn about sublimation. I'm going to explain what that means by showing what happens when iodine sublimes. Solid iodine looks like this, bluish black pellets or sometimes crystals of iodine. In this e-flask, the experimenter has heated the iodine, producing purple iodine vapor. The funny thing about iodine though, is that the iodine vaporizes directly without turning into a liquid first. This is what sublimation is. Note that through the cork of this e-flask, a test tube with some ice has been pushed through. This causes the iodine to form a deposit on the outside of the test tube. Look here. Sometimes this is called that iodine resublimes, but I think deposits is a better term. Now it's time for you to draw something in your notes too. First we write that iodine sublimes, and then we draw a beaker like this, in which we put some iodine crystals. Solid iodine is written like this with chemical symbols, I2. The indexed 2 indicates that two iodine atoms together form an iodine molecule, and the S between the parentheses tells us that the iodine is in its solid form. On the top of the beaker we put a watch glass and some ice to keep it cold. When we heat things up, this is supposed to be a Bunsen burner down here, the iodine sublimes. It changes from solid to gas without passing liquid. Purple iodine vapors fill the entire beaker. The iodine vapor is written I2G. It still consists of iodine molecules, I2, but right now they're in their gaseous form, so we add a G between parentheses like this. Write this too, that sublimation is when a substance transitions from solid to gas without passing liquid. On the watch glass up here, solid iodine is reformed. We write that solid iodine, I2S, is deposited here. 
So we add to our examples of phase transitions that an example of sublimation is when solid iodine, I2S, is heated, forming iodine vapor, I2G. Now, let's summarize the phase transitions in a nice little picture, so come along and write this, you too. Down here, we write that we have a substance in its solid form. If it transitions to liquid, it's called that it melts. Nothing peculiar about that. If it transitions further to gas, it's called evaporation. If the process is the other way around, and we have a substance in its gaseous form that turns into liquid, it's called a condensation. This is what happens on a cold glass of soda on a hot summer's day. Water vapor from the air condensates on the side of the glass and form droplets of liquid water. If a liquid substance transitions to solid, it's called solidification, except for water, when we instead talk about freezing. And then there is this process, where a solid substance turns into gas directly, that's sublimation. For example, when solid iodine sublimes into iodine vapor. When it returns to its solid state, this is called deposition. Now, I think it's appropriate to mention a fourth state of matter, and it is plasma. If you heat a gas enough, you'll rip off electrons from the atoms in the gas. This is called that the gas is ionized. Why should you learn about this? Well, it's because plasma is the most common state of matter in the whole universe. You see, all the stars, including our sun, is made of ionized gas, that is plasma. But here on Earth, we may see plasma close up, for example, in plasma screens or plasma balls like this one. In any case, let's finalize our drawing by writing that when plasma returns to the gaseous state, it's called deionization. All right, now you've learned about the four most common states of matter in which matter may be found. There are more states, but you don't have to learn anything about them, at least not in this chemistry course.